Hi everybody, this is God Sad. I thought that I would give you a um, short summary of some of my engagement from yesterday on Twitter. Uh, as you know, it's uh, very hard for me to walk away uh, from the endless tsunami of idiocy, the endless uh, violations of reason that I'm exposed to on a daily basis. And so to the best of my ability, I try to weigh in across all forums to try to uh, push back against the never-ending tsunami that hits the shores of sanity. In any case, so yesterday, here's this gentleman, Kumail Nanjiani. He's a, an actor. Uh, who I actually find him very funny on uh, Silicon uh, Valley. Uh, he wrote, I know there are a bunch of people upset at the Nazi comparisons, but the highlighting crimes by immigrants move is literally what the Nazis did with Jews instead of immigrants. A sure fire way to stop being compared to Nazis is to stop acting like them. So let's, uh, let me read you my response to this uh, gentleman. First, I begin with, uh, this, uh, guy is an enemy of reason. He is belittling the horrifying slaughter of millions of people in one of the most vile mass acts in human history by comparing it to a policy with which he disagrees. He is an affront to human dignity, a grotesque comparison. So that was sort of my uh, appetizer. And then, as I often do, I began to satirize his position. So let me read you some of these. Uh, hey, Kumailin, whatever, whatever his, uh, I can't read his, uh, his, uh, hash, his uh, Twitter handle. Hey, Kumail, I presume that you love your family. I also believe that Hitler loved his family. As far as I'm concerned, you are Hitler. If you want people to stop thinking that you are Hitler, stop having the same sentiments as him. <laughs> hey, Kumail, I saw you in photos wearing pants. I also have seen photos <laughs> of Hitler wearing pants. A surefire way to stop being compared to Hitler is to stop dressing like him. And then in brackets, you are a gargantuan idiot who is an affront to human dignity. And then a third one, hey, Kumail, you belong to an ideology that has always exhibited genocidal hatred of the Jews. Hitler acted on his genocidal hatred of the Jews. As far as we are all concerned, this makes you indistinguishable from Hitler. Then in square brackets, see how much fun the Hitler comparisons can be. So that was uh, this uh, idiot. Then I went after very busy day yesterday. Well, I guess any, any day is busy if you care to look for the violations of human reason. So this is uh, UNESCO who tweeted out, here we go, here we go. Let me first read the tweet. No human being is illegal. 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 No human being is, is illegal. No human being 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 is illegal. Stand hashtag with refugees. Now here it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten no human beings illegal. I wasn't convinced when they had gotten to five repetitions. After five repetitions, to me, it seemed like they were on to something. Do you know of anybody else who also argues along the same lines? Yes, they're called kindergartners. All right, so then I decided to go after the cesspool of regressive idiots at UNESCO. No human being is a rapist, only an undocumented lover. No human being is a rapist, only an undocumented lover. No human being is a rapist, only an undocumented lover. No human being is a rapist, only an undocumented lover. Stand with hashtag undocumented lovers and then of course i tagged in all of these tweets at unesco in case they didn't quite understand it <clears throat> i continued with a few other tweets no human being is an armed home invader only an undocumented house guest no <laughs> no human being is an unarmed home invader only an undocumented house guest no human being is an armed home invader only an undocumented house guest stand with hashtag undocumented house guests at UNESCO. By the way, the only reason why I'm not uh, providing a, as forceful an argument as they are via the number of repetitions that I repeat the inane sentence, remember they did 10 repetitions, 
well, I don't, I don't have, I'm restricted by the amount of uh, characters I can use. And so I can't have as good a delivery as they can because I ran out of space on Twitter. Uh, then I added a few others. No human being is a bank robber, only an undocumented money borrower. No human being is a bank robber, only an undocumented money borrower. <laughs> no human being is a bank robber, only an undocumented money borrower. Stand with hashtag with undocumented money borrowers at UNESCO. And finally, oh, there are two more, two more. No human being is a murderer, only rough housing gone too far. No human being is a murderer, only rough housing gone too far. <laughs> no human being is a murderer, only rough housing gone too far. Stand hashtag with murdering rough housers at UNESCO. Uh, hold on a second. I'm sure there is one more. Oh, yes. Last one for UNESCO. No human being is a sexual predator. Only a repeat. <laughs> only a repeat surprise sperm donor. No human being is a sexual predator. Only a repeat surprise sperm donor. No human being is a sexual predator. Only a repeat surprise sperm donor. Stand hashtag with surprise sperm donors at UNESCO. Uh, to the idiots who might be watching this who are saying, but, but why, are you be, why are you trying to be funny? Why are you being satirical? Satire and sarcasm is one of the most powerful rhetorical strategies that a person could have to demonstrate the idiocy of a position. That's why totalitarian regimes ban satire, human, and sarcasm. All right, now we move on to a third schmuck. This is a gentleman who wrote an article titled The Strange Origins of the Free Speech Warriors. Uh, this was in the conversation. It starts off, uh, let me go here. Canada's best-known free speech warriors are Concordia professor Gad Saad, University of Toronto professor and self-help guru Jordan Peterson, and his acolyte Wilfred Laurier, teaching assistant Lindsay Shepard. This is halfway through the, the article. And then he goes on to say some crazy stuff. You know, we're hiding some conservative agenda to whatever. The, the usual stuff. I will provide you the link to the article in question. He's been really hammered, by the way, by a lot of people who've weighed in. So I replied to him very nicely. Uh, he had written to me saying, but are you not simply using free speech to promote your own conservative positions? How is your libertarianism actually about freedom? Here's my reply. We had started engaging one another. Twitter, this is me now replying. Twitter is not the best place for this exchange, but here we go. I'm about as socially liberal as one could be. So I'm unsure which of my quote, own conservative positions, close quotes, you are referring to. I am a true liberal in that I believe in individual rights and individual dignity. No identity politics, no hurt feelings. I support the right of Holocaust deniers to spew their BS and I'm Jewish. So I'm probably much more liber liberal than you and undoubtedly much more cognitively consistent in my beliefs. I fight for your children's rights to grow up in a free, liberal, modern, and secular society. While you undoubtedly grew up in Western freedoms, I come from the Middle East, so unlike you, I do not take freedoms and liberties for granted. You should thank me for my efforts rather than attempt to smear me. Cheers, buddy. Uh, then he got uh, crazy. He, he wrote, uh, hmm, I think you have a rather superficial, if not also principled position I ask that you be more philosophical and sophisticated. Hmm, fighting words. So I write back, oh, FFS. I think you know what that means. I have socks <laughs> that are more sophisticated than this guy, and yet it did not take him long to patronize me. Go check your Google Scholar page and then do mine, Mr. Sophisticated Schmuck. And then he actually replied, that's doctor sophisticated to you. Okay. Uh, so anyways, I got, off the, uh, I got off that train. And then the last, uh, dare I say, schmuck. I'd, I'd like to be a bit more polite to him, but uh, his theory is pretty kooky. This is Howard Gardner. 
I'm trying to find it. I can't find it here. Where is it? Howard Gardner, uh, there was a big think uh, link that referred to Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences. I'm trying to find it. Let me try to find it for you. Let me see where it is. Hold on a second. I hope I can find it. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Uh, so Howard Gardner, intelligence isn't black and white. There are eight different kinds. And then I wrote, yes, Howard. There is soccer playing intelligence, cooking intelligence, tourism intelligence, stamp collecting intelligence, marital intelligence, and fill in the blank for any human activity intelligence. With all due respect, Gardner's multiple intelligences theory is nonsense. For any of you who know that theory, I originally read his book many, many years ago and thought that it was insane. And, you know, it's there's dancing intelligence and physical movement intelligence. Yeah. Uh, dancing intelligence is called someone who dances well. It doesn't mean it's a different form of intelligence. And uh, throwing rocks in a lake so that the rock can skip is not another form of intelligence. And uh, using a slingshot is not called slingshot intelligence. And knowing how to throw a basketball from the free throw line is not called free throw line intelligence. We have words for these things. They're called athletic ability. They're called physical and stamina. They're called sexual prowess. But you don't take every single human endeavor and just add intelligence to it, and it becomes a new form of intelligence. It is profoundly idiotic as a theory. So that's what I was doing yesterday when I wasn't spending time with my family. Remember, there is no way to combat all the silliness other than to enter the arena of ideas and weigh in. Your professor says something that is that strikes you as insane, politely confront him or her or Xir. If your friends on Facebook say something that you disagree with, don't shy away from engaging them. The battle of ideas is an, it goes on. It's relentless. It happens in the trenches. And there is no way to win the battle of ideas if... Everyone decides that they will leave it to someone else to fight it. This is why on a gorgeous uh, day, well, actually, it wasn't so gorgeous yesterday in Montreal, but on a family day, I take the time to get on Twitter and engage in these battles because I feel that if I don't, I'm not doing my part in however big or however small way that I can to contribute to the battle of ideas. And you, too, can do the same thing. Some of you might have larger platforms. Some of you might have smaller platforms but it doesn't matter. Your voice matters. So march on, soldiers of reasons. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.